Okay, we're going to look at the workflow for creating a galvanic corrosion model within Star CCM Plus. Okay, so we've got Star CCM up here. Let's just um, create a new model and uh, there we go. Okay, so let's give it a name. Once it's started, file, save as, we'll put it in in corrosion. Let's call it a coplanar. All right then, so we're going to have um, two coupons, but jointed, so it's a coplanar. Uh, we created that in SolidWorks earlier on, so we can import that geometry import import surfaces and uh, those are the geometries so we can just import that use the standards okay and there we have the geometry um, so let's take our part there we have so we want to mesh that so Assign parts to regions, both parts. So we do uh, a region for each part and a boundary for each part surface. Apply, close. Okay. Uh, let's do a meshing operation. Choose it. We'll do surface mesh, automatic repair, polyhedral, prism layer. And let's go in there. We'll just do a simple mesh. So base side one millimeter. And then on the prism layer, we'll say three. And um, the prism layer total thickness is 33%. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, so we have our geometry. We need to create the mesh. So let's go up here and create a mesh. Mm. Okay, there we are, 84,000 cells. So let's have a look. Scene, new mesh. Okay, straightforward. Okay, so there's the mesh. Um, we need to bring in our models, define the continuer. So, select models. Okay, well it's three dimensional. We're going to do steady state. It's going to be liquid electrolyte, segregated flow, with constant density. We're not actually going to do a a flow model as such so we'll just choose laminar because we're going to freeze that and just solve for potential to get the corrosion in the modules you need electromagnetism electrodynamic potential and then we slide down here to get electrochemistry and we're just going to use polarization we're not bothered about species at the moment so we just use electrochemical reactions that enables us to use the polarization data so there we have that close so that's our media defined um, while we're here let's uh, go to the liquid default is water and all our polarization data is NACL 3.5% make a note of that and we'll need to change the electrical conductivity you could change other things but this is the important thing for the moment uh, that's just tap water so let's do five and there we have okay so we've got our media in there our boundary conditions and we there's the anode that we saw and, and the cathode that we set so for the anode we go to the electric potential specification everything by default is insulator Let's change that to electric current potential characteristic, i.e. 
um, polarization curve there. And then we can go to the cathode and do the same. There. Okay, so now we need to tell the system where this data is and we used tools, tables, and we import tables. So we do new table, file, table, and we put them in in the Y drive. Let's go to computer, the group share on the cluster. Polarization data folder and they are dat files so let's read in we're going to read in the chrome uh, sorry the cadmium and the steel we can actually select them both and then they are there so now we have to assign them to the actual boundary condition so the anode is going to be the cadmium so let's go to physical values there's a characteristic it's asking for the file well we take it from bottle of Alma and we're going to provide the curve and then here it asks for the file and there are the two files so the cadmium and when you click on there potential is always the first column current density is always the second column and then you see it's read that in so that's the anode and then the cathode to the values, current density, tabular curve, give it the name of the curve, and this is cathode, so it's going to be the steel, zero, one, and there we have the steel. Okay, so now we have our model. Let's go back to the continua and put in initial conditions. It's quite sensitive to the initial conditions. So electropotential, initial condition, we'll change that to 0 0.7. Okay, um, initialize. Uh, let's save that. And then uh, we'll solve for potential. Oh, what have we got? Okay. So let's go to solvers, segregated flow. We're not bothered about that, let's freeze the flow. And let's run, and boom, it goes straight down there and flattens out very quickly. There we go. So now we can just go to scenes and we'll look at the. Uh, Let's, let's first create um, in derived parts a plane and I want to do a plane this way so let's say uh, Y so we do there, there okay we'll just create that and now we can go to a scene new scene scalar Go into the scalar and we're going to do uh, scalar. Come on, where is it? Okay, scalar field of potential, electric potential, and we're going to do it on the part, the derived part we just created. And there we can see the potential field, and then the you know so now the, um, we can also look at the current. So let's create a scene. Where we got it? New hmm. scene, new vector, and we we'll go down to vector. And the vector field will choose current, electric current density. See where the current goes. And 
we'll choose that on that same derived part. And there you have the vector scene. Drop it down here. So you can see the current traveling from one place to another. Um, so that's the current traveling from uh, anode to cathode. Uh, what we can do is look at current density, the total current. So let's do a new scene, scalar, and we shall look at electric, a boundary specific current. That's the current density on the boundaries. And that's scalar two. So we'll call it boundary specific current density. And we've chosen the scalar and for the parts, we are just going to choose anode and cathode. Anodic, cathodic. And there we have uh, the current density. And what we, a useful thing to do is to look at the current leaving the domain. So let's look at reports. We do new report surface integral Vanic current and the function for the galvanic current, boundary specific electric current. So it's just going to integrate the boundary specific electric current on, choose the parts, the anode, cathode. Let's get a report, and then we got. Uh, 95 microamps. Okay, so uh, we read in coplanar, we assigned polarization curves, we changed the electrical conductivity, we solved for the electrical potential, and then we calculated the boundary specific current, the current leaving the domain on each of the anode and the cathode. Um, and that's it, that's a simple corrosion model. Thank you.